uh, George Lopez's character says Batman is a fascist just out of the blue because uh, he's talking about how it could be like a Batman cave, I guess. And he's like, Batman is a fascist. And that's how it ends. And it's just like, what was the point of this? Why? Why do you need to have a character insulting Batman in a Blue Beetle movie? Like what? What is the point? Unless the writers literally just have a hate boner for Batman. They don't like Batman. And it, to me, it's just it's just disrespect to your own um just disrespect to the DC material, disrespect to Batman, which is your flagship character. It's kind of bizarre doing it in this scene where you're seeing the old Blue Beetle costumes there too. I it's just it just really gave me a bad taste. Uh, and I know I was watching a little bit of Midnight's Edge. I guess uh, they were talking about this too. Um, Script Doctor talked about it. Maybe talk to him about it on Thursday when we do our Mandalorian review. Before we do that, we might, might ask him about it. But um, uh, he was saying that it, it's a joke um, and that, uh, like, because it's a secondary character, it's not like a direct like attack on the care on Batman or whatever. And we should be allowed to have like these kind of jokes in the films. But I mean, to me, it's more about recognizing the pattern. These people clearly uh, don't like Batman. We've had mo stories where there's just literally like, oh, there's businesses that are being attacked. I'm Batman. I'm just going to fly away now in the comics now. So uh, to me, it's just more, more of that more of like the left wing agenda batman who's literally uh trying to stop crime and stop people getting injured and hurt is now somehow a fascist and it's just it's just sick and then i've also seen people like oh you're trying to be political and it's like no i didn't put that i didn't put this line in the movie they did they're the ones who did this line and they're the ones who are making the comic so it's like oh yeah man you're so bad because you're reacting to what these people did and it's like no uh they're the ones who did this <laughs> And I'm entitled to react to it because I've seen it over time. I mean, this is what they do. This is the pattern that they've created. I mean, it's just more of the same. And it's just uh, um, it's just sick. And I, I honestly, based on just that line, I hope this film uh, absolutely bombs at the box office. Uh, and it's a shame because I actually thought, the for the most part, I thought the trailer was kind of entertaining, kind of fun. Uh, had some energy to it uh, as much as it was kind of like an ape of Tony Stark and uh, an am amalgamation of Tony Stark and Spider-Man. Uh, it did have did have did have some energy to it, I, and, and like that, and then they just killed it with the end of that with that last that last uh, bit of the trailer. And it's like, what is the what is the point? What is the point? well? To be honest, you're probably looking at two different things happening at the same time. You got inter studio politics with Snyder being kicked out on his face yeah. after the mess that happened with the reconstruction verse. Then. You're also looking at the end of uh, the actual inside of the Snyderverse. So inside of that universe, Affleck's Batman is tattooing people when they go to jail. And he's killing yeah. people. He's blowing them. He's dragging bank robbers behind his tank through a city. So to, to the average observer, that seems very extreme. So I, I think that, they're well, right so to call that so I'm gonna push back on. I'm going to push back on you here, though. We don't even know where this is set. The Flash comes out before Blue Beetle, and the Flash is supposed to reset things. So it looks uh, really Snydery, right? That's what I'm saying. The armor change looks straight out of Apocalypse. Yeah, I, I get what you're talking about there, but I'm talking about the timeline of the DCU. So the Flash comes out in in uh, the summer, the summer, and that's supposed to reset the DCU timeline. So and Bat Batfleck is probably going to be going away, and they're going to be doing the Brave and the Bull, which is a whole new Batman. In the James Gunn thing, so I would think we're, that these these people won't even know. At least that's sort of how they're going to try and set it up. That they don't know who Batman is. So this is almost like the first reference to Batman in the DCU, unless we're getting something in uh, the Flash uh, that's going to show us that. But again, well, Flash is going to be resetting this, and Affleck has said he's only in it for five minutes. So that's all. I'm, I'm just going to push back on that. That uh, there, he's re referencing um the batman from batman v superman this is what he yeah, discussed the in the announcement that's what he that's this is what he said they were working on in the announcement he didn't say anything about blue beetle being part of the, the gunverse yeah no, no he's talked about that he has talked about that uh that was in the beginning where he's like like oh shazam's on his own thing we really like blue beetle um it, it, again it all depends on whether or not it um probably does well if they continue with those stories that's true yeah, yeah that's so, a good point with everything that's been happening, Black Adam being dead, then like Dwayne Johnson's confirming it. 
Shazam dying at the box office. I don't even know. Like they're already like putting it on HBO Max, I think, in the next couple of weeks here. And uh, it looks like this film, I hope this film like crashes and burns to see like Fiona Wolf is saying, uh, not going to watch it burn, deconstruction, <laughs> mix burn. Yeah, um, uh, I'm all about that. I, 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 there's just, I just don't understand why you include this at the end of your trailer when you know it's just going to piss a bunch of people off and probably uh, not want them to go see it. I, I just don't think that uh, that's a very smart decision. Whoever's behind their marketing should be fired. Um, and, uh, cause I really do think it's going to turn a lot of people off, no matter if you want to call it a joke or whatever, or you want to try and get more outrage marketing, like, oh, people are, are watching our trailer now. Cause we, cause we had a character say Batman is a fascist in it. Well, sure. You got more people to watch your trailer. Is that going to result in more people going to buy a ticket? No, I, I think you're actually probably losing people that, uh, might've actually gone to buy a ticket. They lost Fianna. Yeah. And they lost me too. I thought the trailer was actually kind of not to say I was going to buy a ticket, anyways. I uh, probably just wouldn't have time to do it just with everything I've got going on in my life with yeah. my kids and everything. And uh, summer, it, when I do have free time, I'm usually going to the racetrack during the summer. So um, I'm not. I'm usually not going to the movies because I get better drama at the racetrack from um, uh, yeah. actual people racing around in circles and then getting pissed off inside of each other um, rather than watching a, a, a scripted, <laughs> scripted, <laughs> scripted drama or superhero uh, movie. So, uh, but uh, I, yeah, I, I I assume there's probably a lot of people that did see that and were like, like, like Fiona maybe, and it's like I'm not going to watch this anymore. Zero intention of going to see this because of this. So couple comments here uh fiana says uh they used to know how to promote story and character over person hills to die yeah and i actually thought the trailer was doing a good job of that until they got to the the that last line and then they just decided to be like hey this is the signal uh this is probably going to be in our film that's what they're telling me that's what they've been telling us for years now um that that's what's going to happen so why would i not expect that to be in the film and i have no intention of seeing something like that in the film nano reaper here uh, kind of echoing what Fiona says, too much of the message in the trailer, I'll pass on this one. Yeah, and I saw some other people saying, like, you also, like, not only did we get that, that, like, he's a fascist, but then you also got the compare and contrast with Blue Beetle in the opening scene where he's, like, the pool cleaner in the rich house, and then his, his, um, uh, his house is, like, some kind of, like, super run-down, um, cement building, um, that they show too. I saw that as well. And then you kind of like highlighted like, oh, they have the SWAT coming in. Like they're being, uh, like immigration is raiding them. Like ICE is raiding them. So there's that too. Um, imagery there as well. Yep. That's, uh, I see people running with this. Syfax says George Lubbock character is a conspiracy theorist who says more things about other heroes as well. Oh. Uh, I saw Chris Gore was saying this on Midnight's Edge. He said he heard that from another source that saw the movie. Can't really confirm that. Uh, but anyways, that's something weird that, a, like, why would a conspiracy theorist be calling Batman a fascist? Uh, there, it's just, again, it's in the trailer, out of the blue, there's no context. We don't have any context about who his character is. We're just, this is just a relying on a rumor about from Chris Gore saying this. So I'm just going to look at it face value until I get more context on what it is. But even then, I don't think that, uh, even if that's in the movie, uh, you don't put that in the trailer to market it because you're just, you're telling me, that uh, you uh, that 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 you're, you're telling me that you don't want people uh, th that it's going to be political and you're having someone called Batman a fascist and you're going to be having that kind of messaging in there. I'm just I don't want to watch any of that stuff anymore. Nano Reaper, Reaper says the whole hating on people with money is getting played out. What is the virtue of being below the poverty line? Um, uh, it's it's okay to have an idealistic high trust society setting for all sorts of books and comics not everything has to be a cynical uh cluster yeah i kind of agree with uh fiona there um um you can like you can be virtuous and still have um a decent like it, it's harder like christ tells us it's harder when you have a lot of money to be virtuous but that's not uh, impossible um you just probably that's probably the cross that you have to carry um if that is indeed the cross that you have to carry uh to be more humble and be and, and show more charity uh and and live out those those other virtues uh at the same time obviously um being being like physically poor also uh, isn't a virtue in and of itself you have to be poor in spirit uh humble as well and still live out those 
those uh, those virtues that will give you a wealth in the in the second life. So yeah, there's nothing inherently uh, virtuous about being wealthy or <laughs> virtuous about being poor either. Um, those are just uh, almost like a state of being. Yeah. Uh, that can change, clearly. <laughs> like we live in the United States, those things can change. Uh, you can um, go from being poor to being wealthy. You can also go from being wealthy to, uh, to poor. You can also be going from wealthy to uh, in prison uh, if you uh, commit crimes. At least that's what uh, we, that's the ideal that we have, right? If you happen I'm sure to if that's be actually Harvey doing, Weinstein. <laughs> I'm not sure if that's how it actually works out all the time, right? <laughs> not 100% of the time, but <laughs> most of the time. We hope most of the time. We hope. Right. All right.